I'm Lawrence Francis, host of Interpreting Wine, welcoming you to the New York Grower 2023 special series. This series has been specially commissioned by the New York Wine and Grape Foundation for your listening pleasure. Across these episodes recorded in February and March 2023, we'll be exploring the modern New York scene in the company of six growers. The series will also feature a deep dive into the New York Wine and Grape Foundation's Sustainable Vineyard Certification. Absolutely reflecting the most up-to-date realities of grape growing in the region. Give my listeners level of interest and the wider wine train's interest in quality grapes as the basis for quality wines, a series I'm particularly excited to share and a real landmark for the channel. Subscribe to be alerted when new series episodes go live. We continue the series today in the company of Oscar Binke and Thais Vashuren of Herman J. Weimar. Thais tells us his origin story and the early days of implementing biodynamics at Weimar. He gives us an overview of the biodynamics program, talks Demeter certification process and the day-to-day -day practicalities, we make the connection between the Demeter Certification and the New York Wine and Grape Foundation Sustainability Certification. We get a deep dive into the biodynamics program at two vineyard sites. And we close by talking about future market opportunities for New York wines. Enjoy! My name is Thais. I was born in the Netherlands. My dad is Dutch. My mom is French. Uh, we moved to France in 1992. Uh, my parents owned a restaurant ever since, so I grew up in the kitchen. And when I was 16, I decided that working in the kitchen is too hard and too many hours. So I decided to start grape growing and winemaking. And so I studied grape growing and winemaking for like six years in France. And mm -hmm. in 2009, I was done with school and decided to move to the U.S. Um, I found this internship in Minnesota to work in a winery in Minnesota, working with hybrids. Um, I had a good time, but Minnesota is cold, very cold. And uh, during that time, I met uh, Katie that became my wife. And we. she also studied grape growing in Dijon, but she's American. And uh, we we uh, we decided we want to go back to a grape growing region, like a mm. work viniferas. And we visit Oregon first because Katie loves Pinot. And uh, I grew up in the Muscadet region, so I'm more like a white wine person. And so we visit Oregon first, and we after visit the Finger Lakes. And when I arrive in the Finger Lakes. It was snowing, like like a day like today, snow and cold, mm -hmm. windy, mm -hmm. but a b sightseeing, gorgeous, just beautiful. And I have a few few tasting, and I stop at Weimer, like randomly. Katie said, hey, we have time, we can stop at Weimer. I know Oscar and Fred. I was like, fantastic. <laughs> and did a one tasting, I remember with Daddy. I remember I was with Daddy. Daddy. With Daddy, did a one tasting. <laughs> And Fred came in and was like chatting about me and what are you doing here? And I was like, hey, you know what? I'm kind of looking for a job, actually. And I sent Fred my resume. And literally like six hours after, I got a text from him saying, all right, when can you start? <laughs> so that was December. And December 2013. And, and I started in May 2014. Um, yeah, it's and almost 10 years. Into it's going to be 10 years next 10 year. Years. Oh my God. <laughs> and so um, 2014, I was just working in the vineyard, um, just being a tractor driver, my hands on everything in the nursery and grape growing in the, wine, in the winery a bit. But uh, when I worked in France, uh, I worked for Domaine de Lécu, which is a biodynamic producer in the Muscadet, mm -hmm. first biodynamic producer in the, actually in France. And uh, Fred and Oscar approached me a few times. Said, hey, you know, we saw that you did biodynamic. What do you think? Should we try it? And so in 15, I say, well, let's try it. Let's, let's, why not? And um, I got, I was, I got very lucky that they, you know, that I was able to do that in 15. 
after a year working for them. And uh, 15 went, went great, 16, fantastic, 17, great every year, good crop, good quality fruit, good quality wine. And 18 uh, was more like a rough growing season, a lot a of complete, rain. complete disaster. <laughs> oh, yes. A rough growing season, I would say. <laughs> a rough growing season. And uh, we, uh, as, uh, the, um, the sites that I did, the biodynamic um, experience was at the winery set, site, HW. And we have four blocks. We have block HW1, two, three, and four. And the biodynamic experience was on the four. But the rest of the farm, I tried to do more like an organic farming. And uh, in June, July, we had a lot of rain. So we got hit on the three blocks, one and two and three, with black rot. Like we lost like, you know, 70% of it, the crop in just yeah. two weeks. Yeah, it was something mm. like that. And, but the biodynamic block looked fantastic during that post bloom. And harvest came in and harvest was, it was a rough harvest to be, it was a rough one again. And it was like a lot of botrytis, sour rot, but HW4, the bio the block, bio. Well, the fruit was fantastic. It was just beautiful fruit. Like numbers wise, if we talk about numbers, pH, acidity, you know, and bricks mm. was also mm. fantastic. Flavor were great. And after after that, we did, so when we decided, all right, biodynamic farming works in the finger legs. So this is when my role in the company changed quite a lot. Mm-hmm. And so I tried to expand biodynamic farming on all the blocks. And uh um, was an eye opening. Eye opening. It was an eye opening. Mm-hmm. 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 A lot of testing and yeah. experimenting. Yeah. And I know we didn't really we didn't really commit any acreage then. What went to no, five to ten no. acres? It, yeah. it, it was just five acres, four mm-hmm. four and a half acres. Mm-hmm. And uh so nineteen, we uh, had a discussion with Fred and Oscar. I said, Hey, you know. Fred was like, you know, we had a lot of black rot on the big block. I don't know if we can do this anymore. And secretly, <laughs> I, I didn't say talk to anybody, just to Dylan, the, the winemaker of the, the winery, say, hey, like, I'm going to do biodynamic farming on the old site. Because like, <laughs> why not? <laughs> and I still remember we said, like, we were sorting grapes, ninth, like September, end of September 19, the HW2, the main block, the old, the old block, actually. And I told Fred, this is 100% biodynamic farm fruit. And Fred, like, stop. He put his hand on the sewing table and said, I had to think about it for a second. <laughs> but the, fruit was, the fruit was fantastic. It was beautiful fruit. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and uh, ever since, we never stopped. And now it's mm-hmm. 20, 2023. Yeah. And funny story, yesterday we were supposed <laughs> to be um, – uh, inspected by the Demeter, so the, the mm-hmm. biodynamic mm-hmm. Uh, certification agency. It was supposed to come here yesterday, but we had no snowstorm the whole winter. <laughs> In the day she's supposed to come, <laughs> we got hit by a snowstorm, so we canceled inspection. <laughs> yeah, but she'll be back. Anyway. She'll be back. Yeah. She'll be back. <laughs> Well, and absolutely, well, once once, once they hear this, then they'll definitely be back because uh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, you, <laughs> you, you're doing their job for them. You know, that's a that's a real um, advert. But I'm I'm curious, you know, where they're leading up to 2018. You know, it's 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 kind of so technical in a way. You know, you've got the different blocks. You, you're almost doing like different controls, aren't you, on on the different blocks? And 18 was then the the kind of test of that, but. In the build-up in the years previous to 18, were there any other uh, clues, really, I guess, about what might have been actually happening and changing with that biodynamic block, you know, perhaps in terms of uh, vis- visibly or any ratings or even how the wine was coming through? Well, I think, if can I answer that one oh, a little bit? Absolutely. If you look back even further back, you look back, you know, 10, 10 15 years it's been a gradual, and we might have mentioned this before here in our other when you talk to Fred and I, but when we have paid attention quite a lot to the health of the vines in the vineyards and what if we, for example, start introducing cover crop, we are uh, we are not using herbicides. That's 15, almost 20 years into it now, not using herbicides. We're seeing the health of the 
the vine or the health of the soils or the uh, richness of the soils or the the fertility that obviously affects the vines and the health of the vines, which we all then have seen that the fruit is healthier that comes in on the sorting table. And then we start relying on indigenous yeast and we're starting mm-hmm. hand picking and so forth. There's a lot of processes, mm-hmm. varied amount of processes that have been taken place into this. Yeah. So when we are looking into the biodynamic fruit, it was, it was, we was pretty fast on observing the difference. Yeah. We yeah. paid attention. Uh, and so we saw it. So that, that's, uh, I think that's, so we have done a lot of things leading up to biodynamic. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe we want to talk a little bit about those preparations, like what, what it is that we've seen then, you know, if you, you, you spray the silicas and so forth, where we see a little difference in the fruit. Well, when uh, we saw difference in the fruit, you know, the thicker so, and so from, forth. For and and sorry, about, sorry, if, if I would, would moment, if, if that, that's great. I mean, and um, I love what you've said there because it's almost like you, you've, uh, you know, you've, you've given away the, the ending of the story really right at the start, which, <laughs> which is absolutely great. <laughs> you know, we, 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 uh, you know, spoiler alert. Um, but uh, I think it's, it's great then. Let, we can now, yeah, take, take a, I guess start to link all, all of those different parts of the story. And, but I think, you know, first of all, you know, I know we, we did have you on Oscar in uh, only back in episode 480. So that's definitely one to, to listen to after this one, if you haven't already. Um, but I wonder if, yeah, Tice, you would, wouldn't mind just yeah, taking a step back, giving us that big picture, I guess, in terms of what are the, you know, overall now, what, what are the sorts of um, sizes of plantings that we're talking about? What are the different, different grapes? And then, I think that will give us the canvas to then start to explore how you treat those different sites and, and how you treat those different grapes really through, so through like that on, biodynamic on lens. The, on the biodynamic. Yeah, on the biodynamic side. Yeah. So we, so other site, so we are, uh, we have a Weimer, with Weimer and Sinkson, we have four sites. The sites that we're doing biodynamic farming, it's only, it's called like HW site. So it's at the winery and the, it's like 33 acres um, vineyards separated in four blocks. Uh, three blocks is Riesling and one's in Chardonnay. Uh, we have 15 acres of Riesling that was planted by Herman in the end of the 70s. We started in 77, planted 77, the, 78, yeah. Planted in the Chardonnay at the same time. Uh, so the older block. And after we had two younger blocks planted in 2000, I think it is, 26. No, no, not six. Uh, nine and ten. Nine and ten. Was here, think. One. Oh, that was just six. No, no, oh. that was eight and nine, and ten. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, take it back. Um, so yeah, this is where we are here. So we are mostly working with Riesling and Chardonnay on biodynamic farming. Um, Riesling, which is like actually an easier grape to grow, biodynamic farming wise. That's why if you look in Alsace or like Germany, there's a lot, a lot of biodynamic producer, um, just because the a little bit more like disease resistant. That's, you know, that you see with Pinot or like sometimes like Chardonnay. Chardonnay can be a tough one. We see a little bit with Dany Mildew and Pardon Mildew. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm, I'm working with grapes that are also like a little bit more like hardy. Like not, it's still vinifera, but it's still a bit more hardy. Um, but on the reds, we, we do Saparabi. We do Saparabi. So, um, we, um, so we started last year doing biodynamic farming experience at Standing Stone on Saparabi. And Saparavi shows, like we, I did on Riesling and Saparavi. Uh, Riesling was a bit more difficult uh, season last year, but the Saparavi was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Like it didn't show any diseases, any, like nothing. Like just, it was clean fruit from, from leaves were clean from the beginning to the fruit was extremely clean during harvest. Mm-hmm. That was, that was almost like a kind of like eye opening, um, like last year. And I'm planning on standing stern, hopefully in the next seven, seven years, like to be 100% biodynamic farmed. So we have about then 30, 35 acres here at Weimar. Mm-hmm. We're in about similar, 30, 40 over there at standing stern. That's 40, 40, 40. Yeah. 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 But 15 is plant organic now. Yeah. I mean, uh, um, biodynamic. Biodynamic, yeah. And we have some other sides. So we manage about 200, well, 180 to between 180, 190 acres that we manage now. Mm-hmm. And then now in a 
then a quarter is now under under Demeter, and then we're going into almost getting into half there. Yeah, yeah. And in, an in interesting uh, timing, really. There, as you say, with the with the uh, the certification that that that, that wasn't um, basically, but I think that would also be you know an interesting part of the story, especially Thais, as you've you've had experience over in France. How does the certification regime, I guess you'd say, there in the states in the Finger Lakes, how how does that maybe compare with some of the other um, ways that um, vineyards can be certified as uh, as biodynamic? And maybe also just give us an insight into you know what are what are the, what are the um, the big level, the top top level, you know, so, requirements well, of so a, an inspection. When so when will we be certified? We be the first winery growing viniferas on the East Coast being Demeter certified. I guess I won't say that loud. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so what just... was that? <laughs> <laughs> so that, 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 that would be great. Uh, it's, um, so uh, the process, Demeter biodynamic process, it's, it's a long journey. Um, the problem is in the US, there's not too many. There's only 75, I might be wrong, with that, only 75 Demeter certified wineries. In like yeah, in the US, they're all US, uh, and they are California and Oregon. Yeah, almost all of them. Right? Yeah, mm-hmm. California, mm-hmm. And California, Oregon, and if you look at the Loire Valley, like even in Muscadet, in my hometown, which is like mm-hmm. two thousand people, thirty wineries, there's like three Demeter certified winery in just one small town. In mm-hmm. The... Mm-hmm. So like you, you can see the scale like from between the US and France. Um, uh, in France, like in, in Europe, they separate also, like you have Demeter, and after you have Biodiva. So I don't know if you saw something mm. on the label from Europe, you have like this logo Biodiva. So it's, they're related to Demeter, but it's, it's kind of like um, the standard for Demeter biodynamic farming is slightly different for the grape growers in Europe. There's a bit less restriction. Um, in the US, it's the old Demeter standard biodynamic standard is the same doesn't matter if you grow blueberries if you like growing herbs or you're like a dairy farmer or you're a grape grower so it's a little bit um there's them they're very strict which is great you know don't get me wrong mm. it's mm. very good and very strict both about things that we're doing here but it's a lot of like when you answer the questionnaires like non-applicable non-applicable because mm. a lot of stuff it doesn't apply for grape growing but it's uh yeah uh, i mean at the end is this the standard is very um complicated but simple it's like you need to have like livestock in your farm uh you cannot be like a monoculture you have to be like a polyculture you have mm-hmm. to you need to be, you know so we have cover crop like in the row but we are also like open fields with cover crop we have like you know five acres of buckwheat field we have you know mustard we are getting, we are getting three acres of sunflowers like outside the vineyard so we are not allowed to be just like growing grapes we have to grow other crop mm-hmm. and um mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of like what, uh, and and of course, like, you know, you're allowed to use any, like, fungicide or, like, synthetic pesticide. Uh, so it's, I mostly do teas, and um, it's a lot of, like, it's a lot of, like, you know, checking the vineyards, the health of the vineyards. Hey, I see some downy mildew on the leaf. All right, let's get in. It's, like, it's just, it's a lot of walking, checking the vineyards. Um, like, some, a lot of people asking me, oh, you know, it's, like, it's, it's possible to do this here, but I think it is it is possible to do it in Finger Lakes. Yes, it just you need to be present in the vineyards constantly. You cannot be on the tractor, like driving, you know, three miles per hour on the tractor, listening to music, watching, looking straight. You have to like walk the vineyards. You have to look at the vines on the left, on the right. So um, there's a lot of scouting involved. Yeah, so you have to be much more reactive. Or, we have or to be proactive, pro- proactive, proactive yeah. and reactive. Mm-hmm. Like, um, but yeah, and so all everything, all the teas that I do at here from all the preparation or like the just I use herbs as a fungicide. And if mostly is grown actually on the site. We forge for a hostel, the hostel tea, the five BD five hundred eight is the main herbs used as a fungicide is grown actually around in the woods and around the creeks here mm-hmm. and i use like thyme and rosemary um so also i think it's grown like in the finger lakes so people are helping me forge for those herbs so um, yeah that's that's kind of like what's yeah it requires 
to be a Demeter Solify. And of course, it's like we, uh, you can do a wine that's say made with biodynamic farm grapes, or you can make a wine that's say biodynamic wine. So, like in the winery, also, so Fred and Dylan and Brianna, they also have to follow the standard. Uh, but for them, they have nothing changed from the beginning because, as Oscar say, we don't have the yeast. We do like um, under the organic European EU uh, sulfur, sulfur level. level. There's no finding agents, so everything is all. We are like natural wine. We, we don't adjust. The we don't. Yeah, we don't adjust anyway, anything. So, so we don't have to do much. No. But they still want us to separate, separate some of the processes. Yeah. So okay. because we, we have our other site won't be certified, so they are very strict about, um, hmm. like. Um, non-certified fruit and non-certified wine with certified wine and certified fruit. <laughs> but uh, so it's, there's a lot that are very like nervous about it. So there's a lot of like tracking everything that we're doing. So if, for example, I move a tractor from one farm to the other one, that tractor has to be clean. And we have to report on the Excel sheet that do we clean up, who clean up, what kind of uh, chemicals that you use, you use water or like just a brush with soap. So there's a lot of like, you know, tracking everything that we're doing, which we're actually doing it already. Mm. So which is for us, it's, it's pretty easy. Mm. Easy would be nice. easy, not yeah. the right, yeah. right word, but that's okay. Yeah, it's at least, it's at least, uh, uh, it's, a habit. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's at least, uh, yeah, a part of the culture and uh, some, something, something that you've, you've been doing for, for, for years now. So I, I guess it's, yes, uh, yes, it right. is well established. Something that, that, that actually we really kicked off this particular series with was, was my conversation with Justin Jackson at the New York mm-hmm. Wine and Grape yeah. Foundation. And uh, I'm curious, you know, to, to understand, uh, uh, um, you know, having had that sustainability conversation and, um, you know, understanding the way that that interplays with, with grape growers in the Finger Lakes as well and in, in the wider New York State area. Um, do, do this Demeter certifications, do you think that they also um, bring in sustainability elements as well? Is, is, that, is that also part of that certification or, or is it actually more the sustainability is kind of its own thing that, that's coming through for, from that separate process? I mean, I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, um, again. No, you start. You go. You go. You go. You I go. mean, so Demeter is mostly on like on the farm side. Uh, here with with Oscar and Fred, when we talk about sustainable, it's not only about the farm; it's also about the people. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, we have a wellness committee that I meet like once a month to talk about you know people's issues or like my ideas. What should we do for the company for the people working here? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a sustainable committee about, uh, you know, um, we have a uh, Brianna and Susanna did a, it's called like a Bokashi, like yeah. fermentation for like <laughs> our like food scrap from the, from the tasting room. Yeah, right. And so we, um, the Demeter certification, as I said, is just for the farm, but we internally, we are doing our own sustainable like, um, yeah. program. But I think if I can, uh, and see if I can answer his question. Um, I, I did not answer your question. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, like, I'm trying to answer his out. question. I don't was... <laughs> uh, yeah, don't get me started with Formula One here just yet. We'll be ready. <laughs> but if you look at the sustainable program that uh, your Wine and Grape Foundation is putting in place, uh, you you have these pillars with input reduction. You have soil health. You have resources and waste and health of ecosystem mm-hmm. and also the the one important factor of New York and Great Foundation sustainable program New York sustainable program here with the vine balance is the continuing continuous improvement. There's mm-hmm. an educational element. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if you look at those pillars that are put in place, the Demeter is definitely falling into place there. Yes. I think it's just I think the goal is the same and we're approaching it in a, in a different fashion, but I think yeah. it's actually okay. very much, yeah. Yeah. very much yeah. In, yeah. Absolutely. in sync, if you put it that way. Um, so I think that's it. I think we're all trying to improve things and do it better yeah. in a responsible manner. And that's, um, and I think there's, there's uh, audits in that program too. And there's definitely a social aspect to mm-hmm. the, to social aspect to it also. So, yeah, definitely. 
It, it does keep coming up, and uh, you know, I, I don't, I make no apologies for reusing the same metaphor, but uh, I just, I just think it, it's so important in business and in life that idea of skating to where the puck is going. You know, it's like you, yeah. you've got, you've got so many, um, I think, forces and winds are kind of all, all going in that same direction, and it's like, okay, you can, you can try to hold things back, and you can, you know, try to, try to, you know stick to your guns or, you know, do, do things your own way, not necessarily for, for you guys there, but, um, you know, because it sounds as though you've, you've actually given that thought and, and, you know, you've been moving in this direction. And to be fair, a lot of, I think a lot of people in New York state as well, you know, that that's another thing that keeps coming up is that actually the things that are in vine balance, the things that are in the sustainability program are actually, if you like, they're just shining a light on the things that people have already been doing for the last 10 years. And I think that yeah. that in and of itself, again, it, it means that it means that the growers can demonstrate what they've been doing, and it kind of preempts, I think, you know, any sort of skepticism in the in the consumer that that just says, "Oh, you know, are they, are they just sort of jumping on the sustainability bandwagon?" When you can yeah, see, no, oh, actually, this has been coming for we've been doing this no, for right. years. We it's just haven't fun. been uh, shouting about it. Yeah, exactly. No, that's right. We haven't, and the. Funny how you say that. I think I was on a uh, informational Zoom with some of the inspectors that, and they were like, "But you haven't, you know, you used cover crop here on the rows for decades, and we haven't used any chemical fertilizers and so forth. We just, you know, and we've taken care of our lake. We have all these lake organizations that takes care of the lakes and so forth. So we all, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's in mm -hmm. general, and maybe New York, but in Finger Lakes, you have very small family owned farms mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. like you go to back to Europe and there's a lot of care and long-term thinking in the vineyard and really no one wants to excuse my language spray use spray shit in the vineyard so you don't know I mean and you don't use <laughs> right. chemicals no. and so forth you want to care for the land so it's uh no nobody spray no that's right shit it's for fun it, no. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's yeah I think it's a we're in a we're actually in a much better place than maybe people thought. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. Which, which again, I, I think is, is always the, the the positive way around, right? It's like if if yeah. uh, if I think there there will be um you know there will there will be regions around the world who are coming under increasing scrutiny because the consumers are demanding it, and then actually, you know, you're kind of opening the the kind of the cupboards, and you, you don't know what's going to kind of um, fall out. And this is absolutely. Yeah. Um, maybe it's been working against you from a from a from a marketing perspective and from actually a sales perspective. But but you know, as a consumer, I'd I'd rather that you collectively, as a New York industry, had been doing the, all of those sustainable, positive, mm -hmm. um, you know, longer term approach things and not talking about it rather than kind of the other way around. So uh, you know, yeah, I think yeah. it's a it's yeah. a definitely a a kind of a positive. One thing, you know, I think about the about the channel, you know, which which I'm, I'm sure Oscar knows as a as a former guest, you know, is that you know we do have time to to go into some of the the more geekier uh, elements of uh, of the production there, and I, I, I you know, I, I felt as though, um, you know, Tice, you 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 really had a, a kind of I think a number of different rabbit holes that you could have potentially taken us down earlier there, in terms of you know talking about the. <laughs> The teas, the preparations, the cover crops, the use of uh, livestock, and I'd really just kind of invite you to to take us down uh, some of these rabbit holes, really, uh, and and potentially, you know, relating it back there to uh, any number of different things, you know, in terms of the the different grapes that you've got. You've already mentioned riesling, you mentioned saparavi, um, but equally, I, I think also you you've spoken about two different vineyard sites. Um, you know, you have spoken about Standing Stone. You, you're talking about the home blocks there. So, um, it, you know, I'm picturing a, a sort of a graph here. You've got lots of different uh, kind of combinations and permutations and combinations that are going on there. So, yeah, again, maybe you know, start to tell us more about those different biodynamic inputs, but then also start to, I guess, shade in some of the nuance between grapes between sites. Uh, okay, I'm going to talk with the, the farm, separating the two farms. So HW, we are like, it's a very like no topsoil, uh, straight on shell, uh, less vigorous compared to Standing Stone. 
um, there's a big difference. Like Stimson is very deep soil. You can see like that, you know, you can, you can tie four canes and still grow like an amazing amount of like wood. Um, so HEW, uh, as I mentioned, started in 15, uh, 19 and 20s when we started including like animals in the program. So we start with chicken. We start with like 50 chickens. Now we're down to five because we're having some predators issues. <laughs> um, but the chicken help, you know, like kind of like, like cleaning around the vines. They are like free to do whatever they want to do. They go in the vineyards, they clean up around the vines, like the soil. And after we added sheep, so we added like 20 sheep in our vineyards. The goal is to do like less uh, mowing and less, um, you know, mechanical, we call like a, the takeout. It's like a mini call, like weeder that goes between the vines. So we, um, the goal is to having less tractor input during the production. Um, so we rotate the sheep. They go into one block, to the second block, to the open fields. Sometimes they go to Oscar's house at 10 p.m. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and mid, a midnight cattle herder. <laughs> I just don't like it. I do what the chicken. <laughs> so, we, uh, so we have those, like the livestock, like, you know, inputs in the vineyards. And after, like, doing the growing season. So growing season starts from usually the first week of May, but break is May. And after harvest, it's, like, until, like, mid-October, end of October. Uh, so the spray program, I'm like extremely limited on thing that I can use. Um, so it's mostly I do like teas. So when I do teas, it's like I forge like nettle, uh, chamomile, lavender, um, horsetail. What else do I do? Um, I get like, you know, I have thyme, rosemary. And so what I do is like, um, let's say I need to spray on a Wednesday. So I follow the moon calendar. Um, it's a it's a classic. I'm sure all grandparents are still using it. I follow the constellation, moon position in front of the constellation, and um, let's say all right, it's a leaf day. So I'm gonna spray the vineyards. Gotta have a little bit of daily mildew. It's a leaf day, perfect. So um, I can look at the calendar and I say, oh, it's in two days. So on um, let's say it's a, you know Monday, I'm gonna do the prep. So what I do is like I have 55 gallons. Five fifty-five gallons, like small tanks, that I put the herbs inside, and I brew with with some herbs that I put in the bag, and I brew it for like an hour. Put you know like a uh, hundred and fifty gallons, like old wine tank, and I have two of those, so I fill those tanks all the way to the top. Let them macerate for two or three days, and before I put them in the field, I do the you know the vortex. Uh, steering and after I put in a sprayer and spray the vine vineyards with it. And this is kind of basically what I do on spray program. Um, Demeter allowed under certain circumstances, like heavy pre disease pressure to use a copper and a sulfur spray, but it's very, very restricted. So I need to make a phone call, tell them, hey, I have like heavy rain right now, it's bloom. I need to do a copper spray. So when I do a copper spray and sulfur spray, those are the two elements, fungicide element that a lot of people like, kind of like, we don't like copper, we don't like sulfur, it's toxic. Uh, so what we do is we have a tunnel sprayer that um, there's no drift. So I spray in the vineyards and any chemicals that passed the leaves or the, the plant itself goes back to the sprayer because I have some like, there's actually, uh, we set, you catch, catch basin. You catch, catch, I catch yeah. all the extra uh, drift of chemicals. So mm -hmm. if, and if I use like a um, um, fungicide, like sulfur copper, there's always a minimum amount and every drift actually go back in the tank. So like there's no residue on the ground. All the pesticides apply on the leaves. So uh, that's, that's what I do. And I do this until like end of July. I usually put my spray away the last week of July, a lot of people in the finger next look at me is like, you're crazy. Like, <laughs> there's absolutely no way. I need to keep going. I need to keep going. And um, so end of July, beginning of August, if you walk all the blocks, you can see that the leaves have a slight different colors than the other, the other growers. So we have a kind of like a dark, dark, Fred sometimes say like army green color to the leaves. And the leaves are like thicker. And the skin and the berries are like smaller berries, but like thicker berries. 
And I always explain to the people, it's like, you know, when in the winter time, you, your body makes extra cells on your arm and your legs and your face just to protect from the wind to the cold. And the leaves, the plant himself, it says like, hey, like, I have nobody helping me fighting those diseases. My only thing, tool I have is to make like thicker leaves and thicker berries skin. And from, this is just an opinion. It's not, I don't know if it's a true or not, but for me, this is what I see why, like during harvest, you can see those grapes going, the, the biodynamic grown grapes on the sunny table. You can see that they're so hard to press with your fingers. Like they just, it's, it's a different, different, like the whole plant is acting differently. And it's, it's fantastic to, to watch this going. It is surprising me. And so at Standing Stone, um, so that was HGW. Standing Stone, which was like a richer soil, more vigorous plant. Um, it was, the growing season was a bit more difficult because the plant don't, don't seem like to stop growing. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it was, um, it was uh, we have a little bit of like, you know, powdery mildew that was able to control, but it was just like, um, it's a, it was a two different, like the same day of powdery mildew at Standing Stone, I have nothing at HW. So it was just like, you know, my first thing is like, well, is it too vigorous or is it just because those vines are not ready yet to fight any diseases? Are you saying that vig- more vigorous plants tend to be a little weaker? For May- yeah. yeah. Maybe? Okay. And that's what I'm thinking. So like, it's why we, uh, you know, we don't have a set recipe. Um, a lot mm-hmm. of sometimes people approach me and say, oh, so what do you do for downy mildew or like powdery mildew? It's like, there's not, there's no recipe. There's no recipe. And I'm still like, even at HW site that I started, you know, uh, maybe eight years ago, like I'm still not set of what works great and what does not work great. I'm still changing. Um, like this year, I'm adding cinnamon oil, or like orange peel oil, because I'm, you know, it's like cinnamon oil and orange peel oil is a very good like fungicide. Like as, uh, you know, for like um, apples and like also for your flowers. I have flowers in the garden and it, we put like orange pea on the, on the ground and you fight any like botrytis. So why not trying to do this in the vineyards? So like we keep, we keep moving. There's no set recipe. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I, I can talk about biodynamic farming for hours and hours. <laughs> it's, it just, it's, it's, it's a very, it's a very complicated um, topic. A lot of people are kind of like, yeah, you know, you're doing like voodoo, like hippie things. And like, uh, like it's, I don't believe in it. And it's true. Like, you know, because uh, I approach Cornell and say, hey, are you guys interested in doing a study? And for them, it's like, well, there's no scientific uh, reasoning on everything you're doing right now. And so because right now, it's still like something that, once again, it's like there's no significant proof. If I put, you know, a cow horn in the soil in April, you know, and I do it out in, in September, that my plants might be so beautiful. But what we did so far since 15, it works great. Mm-hmm. So, um, and a but, lot of... But I think, you know, we, we've had to defend, now we're having a go at Cornell. No, 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 to defend Cornell a little bit. They are taking some more interest. They are more in, more, in yeah, it, yeah. yeah. But it's it's you you almost compare yourself with a like a homeopathic yes. doctor, right? Yes. And and the Cornell said, "There's medicine out there. Why, medicine. Why, why is you know, you why doing homeopathic?" Yeah. Like, but I think that that world they're coming together the way yeah. we think and the way we want the future yeah. to work. I think the world is coming together a little bit. They, they come sometimes. They yeah. contact me, ask me, "Yeah, so how did you do this?" Like they walked two years ago in twenty one. And I say, it's fascinating, the side up north, like down in mildew, but your side has no down in mildew. So they approach me, they ask me, what did you do? Mm-hmm. How do you do this? Like, and so there's some... So, like, so when you say, we spray cinnamon, they walk away. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. I mean, it, it just, it's, it's um, yeah, biodynamic farming, it's still like a very touchy subject. Um, at least, I feel like in the US, like in France, like in Germany, or in Italy, it's like it's a, uh, people are used to, because it's a very old... Yeah, it's an all way of farming, and people yeah. are there's more connection, more connection, the, the history, and, um, yeah, yeah. and here still like there's a big gap between like yeah, there's a big gap, yeah. yeah. Not to bring in American, but we we want <laughs> to polarize things here. Yes, no, we yes. want it's either black or white. Right. It's not yeah. a yeah. We don't have problems finding middle grounds. I think in general here. 
Yeah, so, and I think yeah. yeah, this is this is the thing, and, and um, you know, I'm I got to admit, I think this is also something quite attractive to me as well. You know, just just the the, the fact that we don't know everything. You know, there's there's so much in life that we yeah, yeah. We, we don't know everything about, and we kind of try to fool ourselves that we that we do. And and uh, you know, I think oftentimes you know people will kind of jump on you if you can't explain everything and, it, and it's like oh, hold on this is this is kind of life you know isn't that what we're all <laughs> doing really aren't we all kind of trying to trying to figure this out as we as we go along you know when, we, when we're young we always think that you know all the older guys have got everything figured out and they, they uh you know and then, and then we then we get towards that age and we realize we you know we don't have everything figured out and it, i think it's just a it's just a, a a path of life but you know to to kind of i guess you know close off this particular episode and you know i i feel as well definitely you know a, a biodynamic series you know there's this is a this is one big rabbit hole and we've kind of just you know dipped our dipped our toe into but um, i think that the thing for me that would act as a a kind of a if you like a kind of a truth you know or or at least a a kind of a barometer of of uh of of your um project there you know of of your um um experiments and you know your your business model really has been to it would be to talk to the market because i think you know there's that saying isn't there that the market never lies really so um i guess i've i've got kind of two things that are kind of coming to mind one is um, potentially in the US and potentially in export markets, you know, what are, what are people saying about, you know, the fact that there are now, you know, more biodynamic wines that, that are coming through, certainly from 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 those biodynamic grapes, and then also it, it potentially is is kind of related, but you know, how how well set up, um, you know, do you think that the Finger Lakes and, and New York State kind of is to, um, yeah, maybe you know, start to to push that message out there more, you know, that, that, that there are, you know, great sustainability moves being made that are, again, they're, they're in the, in the water, you know, they're in the foundation of, of what's going on over there. Um, should I try? You can As, try. <laughs> try, try, try uh, let's see if I'm going to answer this question here, but uh, y- yes to all, if there was a question, I think, now, when New York wines and Finger Lakes wines were 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 in the Finger Lakes, but New York wines are getting uh, much more attention, and we represent ourselves around the world. We are also we're on the world stage, and we have to up our game um, in to make sure we're on the world stage, and both doing sustainable efforts, which we've done already, but also making sure it's part of our messaging, it's important because mm-hmm. uh, people demand it and they should demand it. We should have full transparency in how we make wine. And I think actually New York has a leg up here in the finger legs. We're, we're actually having great advancement in the sustainability factor. So having that being part of our rhetoric and messaging Absolutely, we should. I think it's the the marketing side. We've just been a little behind on while the efforts has uh, there been there. So, I think it's very important that we have that conversation or that we're part of that on on that stage with this with this. So, it's it's a must. And I think you know internally here we 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 have we haven't got everything right how we market it or how we talk about our own biodynamic efforts yet. I think we have. We've approached it a little bit like old world. We talked about producers here around yeah. the world that, you know, not that we're Charetto or Chateau Palmer, but there's many wineries out there in the world that are great wineries, but they might not, the biodynamicness or the sustainability is not their first leg they stand on and or in their marketing efforts. And I think that's why we, we've been a little careful mm-hmm. and have it more under, underlying underneath on, yeah, this is how we build a good product. That happens to be also biodynamic. Yeah. I mean, so, the, the Demet, I that... Demeter is also very strict about that. That um, it can Demeter is not like it cannot be like a, a marketing thing. It's like having a big sign in the front of the on fourteen and say, "Hey, there's a Demeter <laughs> certified winery right here in five and miles." Right. <laughs> so yeah, also for them, it's good for them once again. They, the farm is the key thing. So for yeah. as you say, Oscar, like the the the, the product, the, the wine is like mm-hmm. a, a key thing. Yeah. It is. It is. 
but then contrary to that, I think the the vine balance and sustainable the trust marks that are being established here in New York is just really good. And and I think we all we got 50, 60 vineyards on board already and everyone is really liking it. Again, again, the spirit is here, the efforts are here, and uh and I think everyone wants to do better. Everyone wants to be responsible. So wow. if there's a guiding light and and even you know milestones to hit, I think we're all jumping on board. A huge thanks to today's guests, Oscar Binke and Thais Vashuren of Herman J. Weimer. Make sure you visit Weimer.com where you can learn more about the project and find their main social media handles. Please help to amplify this episode and the New York Grower series by sharing the direct link, which is interpretingwine.com slash 522. And you can find links to all seven series episodes in the description below. And of course, I would love to have you following along with me on social media, where I'm at Interpreting Wine on Instagram and Facebook, and at Wine Podcast on Twitter. Next time on the Interpreting Wine New York Grower 2023 series, in the seventh and final series episode, I'll be speaking with Bruce Murray of Boundary Breaks. So make sure you're subscribed to be alerted when the final series episode goes live. See you then.